Welcome to this video. Are you struggling to decide which processor you should pair up with your graphics card in 2024? Then you've come to the right place. I am going to go over all of the viable graphics card and processor options and give you all the essential tips and recommendations so that you can clearly understand this by the end of the video. First off, the most important part that you need to know when choosing PC components is bottlenecking. A bottleneck is when one of the system components is holding back all of the other ones, reducing system performance. Even experienced PC builders get this wrong sometimes, but the truth is that there will always be a bottleneck present in your system, and so your mission is to minimize it as cost-efficiently and as best as you can. The usual components to blame are the processor and the graphics card, but if you overspend on these two parts, there may be bottlenecks appearing in other parts of your system, such as RAM, for example. So in short, you need to balance the performance of each component so that they do not cause big bottlenecks in your system and to ensure that you get as much performance as possible for what you paid. To get an idea of when you should be spending more on your GPU or on your CPU, you need to know what programs, games, or applications you will be running and using. For example, by upgrading your GPU, performance will drastically increase in games, while in other applications it might make no difference at all and this is also applied to all of the other components, such as the CPU, RAM, etc. For the sake of this video, I will only be covering gaming performance and which components to combine to get great performance for your money. For gaming, something really important to take note of is the GPU's VRAM, or its video memory, which is used for storage for data related to graphics rendering. What this means is that the more VRAM you have, the better your gaming performance and graphics quality can be, because it stores all the data used for rendering game textures at higher or lower resolutions. But this is somewhat of a simplified explanation. What matters is the fact that if you don't have enough, the GPU's VRAM becomes a big bottleneck that can seriously decrease performance in graphically demanding games. So this is an important factor that I take into consideration when it comes to my GPU recommendations later on. Let's briefly talk about future-proofing, which is quite a misunderstood topic and might be a bad idea for most PC builds. The reason why this can be bad is because you are overspending money on your CPU, for example, in the hopes that in two to three years, you will get more frames per second when buying a new GPU than you would have initially. I myself didn't quite understand this concept, so I'm going to clarify it. It is better to not future-proof and spend your budget on current hardware meaning you get more FPS now rather than in a few years if you upgrade one of the parts. The truth is that future-proofing is a considerable option only at the ultra-budget or at the high-end spectrum, where upgrades to parts may happen more often. In my opinion, I think the best way to spend your money is by maximizing your performance now rather than preparing for the future. Also, before we continue, please subscribe for more content like this. I really appreciate it. Moving on, I will start with my budget 1080p CPU, GPU, and RAM recommendations, and then go up to my 1440p and 4K recommendations. For balanced 1080p gaming, I recommend having a 4 to 6 core CPU, such as the Ryzen 5 4500, which has a great price to performance ratio, or an Intel E312 100F, which is slightly more expensive, but offers better performance, even with its four cores. And for the GPUs, I recommend having an RX 5700 XT, which has great performance at 1080p max settings, or an RTX 3060 from NVIDIA, which is twice the price, but is the only decent offering if you want an NVIDIA graphics card. If you don't have any specific preferences in terms of what platform to choose, I recommend to choose an Intel i312-100F paired up with an RX 5700 XT and with 16 gigabytes of RAM to not run into any bottlenecks. This combo is not only much cheaper, but also has much better performance compared to any other options available. Something crucial to mention is the reason why I didn't recommend any newer gen CPUs, such as the 13th and 14th gen CPUs from Intel or Ryzen 5000 series and 7000 series CPUs in my 1080p combos is simple, yet not obvious. It's the price. It is true that they provide more performance, but it comes at a much heftier price tag that just doesn't cut it for a more budget combo. Next up, for balanced 1440p gaming, I recommend having a 6 to 8 core CPU, such as the Ryzen 5 7600 or an i5 13400F, which has 10 cores 
out of which six are performance cores that are faster, and four of which are efficiency cores used in less demanding tasks. The only differences between these CPUs are the price and the core count, with the Intel processor being around $20 cheaper, as well as having four more efficiency cores compared to the competition. But I still recommend the Ryzen 7600 if you prefer having a Ryzen platform. And for the GPU, I recommend getting either an RX 7800 XT, an RTX 4070, or an RX 7700 XT for 1440p gaming in less demanding games. Though I recommend choosing the RX 7800 XT if your budget lets you. In short, I highly recommend the RX 7800 XT over any other GPU in this price range because of its 16GB of VRAM and better rasterization performance in games compared to the competition. Even if the RTX 4070 has better ray tracing performance, which in my opinion doesn't really matter. Last but not least, for balanced 4K gaming, I recommend having an 8 core or more CPU, such as the Ryzen 7 7700 or an i5 14600K, with both these CPUs being one of the best options for a 4K combo. The Intel CPU is slightly faster in most games and also slightly cheaper, so I recommend choosing an Intel platform if you don't have any specific preferences. And now let's move on to the final part, the GPUs I recommend the most for 4K gaming, and they are the RX 7900 XTX or XT or the RTX 4080 from NVIDIA, which are not the highest end GPUs on the market right now, but are the best GPUs if you don't want to go overkill with ray tracing in games at 4K resolution. So this is the final combo, but if you want to take it even further, then pair one of these GPUs with the Ryzen 7 7800X3D CPU. It is currently the fastest CPU on the market, which only costs around $400 and I highly recommend it. So to finish this video, I want to say that I didn't take ray tracing performance into consideration because of the fact that not every game supports it and those that do take a significant performance hit when ray tracing is on. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you haven't yet, please subscribe to get notified when I post more videos like this. Also, you can check out my latest review of the best budget ultra-wide monitor on the market if you are looking for one.